Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, church, once again. Amen. May, may we be upstanding for the opening of this service this morning. I welcome you all to Cornerstone Faith Assembly Church, a city where grace and love abide. This is your father's house. Those that are here at Cornerstone Faith Assembly, and unto you watching us online, also welcome you. Feel part of this service and we will be blessed together. I want you to do one more thing. Go to your phone. You can go to our page. You can like, you can follow, subscribe, and you can also share with friends. Thank you. And this is the opening scripture for today. Cornerstone family. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. For a time, time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Cornerstone, we are those to worship him in truth and in spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Our Father, and our Lord in Jesus name indeed we are the worshippers that Lord you are seeking for those who worship you in truth and in spirit and here we are Lord God Almighty being found in your presence once again we come with thanksgiving our Father with joy in our hearts King of glory for we thank you because your mercies are renewed each and every morning oh God and today our Father this is the day that you have made. Yes. We have purposed, oh God, mm. to be glad and rejoice in it, oh our Father. Yes, Lord. We bless you, our Lord, for bringing us safely into your house, oh God. Thank you. And for the sole purpose, our Father, to worship you, to praise you, to uplift you, oh God, and to tell of your goodness, oh Father. Yes, we bless you for giving us another day, oh Father, to proclaim your goodness in the land of the living. We bless you, our Father, and we honor you. And for each and every activity that is going to happen here at Cornerstone Faith Assembly, oh God, we purpose to do it for your own glory, oh God, yes. to uplift you, our Father, and to tell of your goodness. Yes, we bless you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, trust, and believe. Amen. 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 And worship. What a joy to be leading on the everlasting us. What a fellowship, what a joy to be leading on the everlasting us. What a fellowship, what a joy to be leading on the everlasting us. What a blessedness, what a Leading on the everlasting earth. What a fellowship What a fellowship What a joy divine Leading on the everlasting earth. What a blessedness What a Oh, 
He has provided a shoulder for you to lean on. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. The Bible says in Him we move, we live, and have our being. So Lord, we want to thank you. We just want to give you glory, man. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on the King of Kings. David Lord, we worship you, Lord. We're leaning on the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. His promises are yea and amen. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory.
all the others to sit down while the Sunday school and their teachers remain upstanding as we pray for them. Let's pray. Our Father and our Lord in Jesus' name, we continue to bless and to honor your holy name. Continue to declare, Father, there is none like you. Continue to say, Lord God Almighty, you are so wonderful, our Father that you've given us another opportunity to worship with our children, oh God. The seed that you've given unto us, our Father. We thank you for this blessing, King of glory. Our Father, as we bring them into your throne room, King of glory, we pray for their paths, King of glory, that our Father, their destiny shall be found in you, King of glory. And the word that they are going to be taught, our Father, they shall never depart from it, oh God. Because in our Sunday school, Lord God Almighty, we have future leaders, our Father. We have men and women and distinguished children, our Father, who will grow to be men of stature in this world, our Father. May they impact the world as they grow up, King of glory. May they be a good example, our Father, even in their schools and wherever they interact with people. We pray for their teachers, our Lord. We pray for their assistant teachers too. Our Father, may you anoint them afresh with your word, O oh God, as we bless them and release them, O oh God, to go into their classes. We release them with the power of the Holy Spirit and the protective blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shall always be upon them. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we pray and believe. Amen, amen. As we release our children to go to their classes. The blood of Jesus is powerful to cleanse, to redeem, to heal. 
there is power in the blood of Jesus. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separate. The bridge was far too wide. But from the past side of the cross, you held me in your so you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's wall to build it here inside. And there on the cross, you paid the debt I owe. Broke the chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of love. Thank you, Jesus, you have washed me away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my
by the blood that you shed on the cross, our sins have been forgiven and they have been washed away. We've been healed from our sicknesses. We've been healed from our emotional uh, issues. We exalt you. We magnify your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and trust. Amen. We greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we hope that you have had a good week. And it's another Sunday that the Lord has brought us together to celebrate our fellowship with him as we continue on this journey to heaven. And every day we come together on a Sunday, it is a day to celebrate victory. And today is another day that we're going to be celebrating our victory. Even as we remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. Yes. And we, we, will, we welcome to be prepared to partake. But we pray, the Bible says that uh, we first examine our hearts. And that is, if there is anything that can prevent you from partaking of the Holy Communion in this place, tell the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you. He's not far in heaven. He's just here with us, and through his Holy Spirit, let's communicate with Jesus and tell him to wash us and tell him to prepare us for a fellowship together with him, a wonderful fellowship. Let's call upon the name of the Lord in a few minutes and getting ready to come and uh, partake uh, the, the bread and the cup. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. Indeed, there is no one like you. You came and you died for us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, once again we come before you, Lord, repenting our sins, and we pray, praying that, Lord, you may forgive us. Wash us once again. Give us a new clean page, O oh God, because we have always desired to walk with you, Lord Jehovah God. No matter what happens in our life, O oh God, our greatest desire is to walk with you is to continue in fellowship with you, Lord Jehovah God. And this is what we desire every time as we continue to live, O oh God. And we know, Jesus Christ, one day you're going to come for us and we're going to have a greatest communion and supper together with you before your Father. Be exalted, be magnified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we do trust. Amen. Uh, we want to request that uh, uh, those that are going to be serving us in, uh, are in place. Come and be sanitized and receive the items and go back as you wait for the next instruction. God bless you even as you come. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of love.
that day, before Jesus Christ went to the cross, he brought his disciples together. And as they were celebrating over supper, Jesus Christ took bread and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body that is going to be broken for all, for remission of sin. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. This reminds us every time we come to communion together over the bread and the cup, the Lord, you gave the greatest sacrifice for us. We pray that, Lord, you're going to be healing us because of the stripes that you are given, because of the fact that you are hanged on the cross, we pray that we're going to be forgiven, even again and again and again. We're going to be healed. We'll continue to have fellowship with you. And we continue to have union with you until you come back for your holy church. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and we do trust. Let's take a prayer together. The Bible says, after they had eaten, he took the cup and also blessed it and told them to take, for it was his blood that was going to be shed on the cross for remission of sin. And indeed, without, remi without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of uh, 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 sin. And this is not the blood of the sheep and the birds any animals by the blood of the precious son of God. Lord, we thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross. And as we take this cup that signifies the blood that was shed on the cross for us from your veins, we pray the Lord you may remember us and you continue with us until when you come back to take us home. Be worshipped, O Lord. Be exalted as King of kings and the Lord of Lords. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we trust. Amen. We take up together. of abundant rain, the sound of thunder, I see lightning in the sky, it's gonna rain, the rain of blessing, Lord Larry rain, Lord Larry rain, I hear the sound of abundant rain, the sound of thunder, I see lightning in the sky. It's gonna rain, rain of blessing, Lord. Lord, there it rain. Lord, there it rain. I hear. Rain of blessing, no less. 
season. saved and I, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not the speaker of the hour, but I'm just humbled today to come and introduce the man of God who is going to be speaking the word of God to us. Um, Pastor Isaac Andeche is one of us at Cornerstone Faith Assembly and a teacher, a great teacher of the word of God. And I do believe that the Lord has given him a word and uh, he has anointed him for the hour to come and speak to us the word of God according to the way the Lord has given unto him. Let's put our hands together for the man of God, Isaac and Deche, as he come to share the word of God with us for the hour. Shout hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Believe that the Lord has something special for you. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know that God has been good to you, shout a greater hallelujah. hallelujah. If you know that you are walking in the grace of God, shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. May I allow the worship team to sing? 
sit down this morning. Thank you for the wonderful job. Come on, appreciate this worship team as they sit down this morning. My name's or my name is Pastor Isaac Kandeche, and I'm a son in this house. And I'm happy to be here this morning. I take this opportunity to appreciate Bishop, our pastor, Dr. Francis Kamau, for giving me an opportunity to share the word of God with the people of God in the sanctuary this morning. Bishop, wherever you are, I just want to say a big thank you. And you are a wonderful father. You are a wonderful mentor. And, 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 and great leadership is hard to find. And so when we have pastor, when we have a father like Bishop Kamau, we ought to appreciate and honor the grace of God upon his life. And therefore, I want you to do me a favor and give the Lord a mighty hand clap as we honor our father in Jesus' mighty name. I also want to take this opportunity to appreciate uh, Bishop's wife, uh, our mama, uh, Ruth, for a blessing to us in many ways. Thank you, mama. We really appreciate you and we love you. Thank you so much. And all the pastors and the leaders and all protocol observed, may the Lord bless you for a wonderful job, Pastor, Pastor Amos. Great job. God bless you, son. Um, allow me to quickly uh, preach uh, on the uh, this morning because our time is far, uh, is far much spent. Uh, may I humbly request us to stand as we open the Bibles in the book of Second Chronicles. Second uh, Chronicles is a scripture that we all are familiar with. Are we there? Second Chronicles chapter 20 verses 1 to five. Second Chronicles chapter 20. All right. Chapter 20 verses 1 to 5. And the Bible says, It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside Ammonites uh, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, uh, a Syrian, and behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is translated to Engedi. Verses 3. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed uh, a fast through all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verses 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the power that is in your word, the power to transform us, the power to give us victory, and the power to accelerate us into the next level of life. And so this morning we pray, O oh God, you will minister unto us and let that very breath of God that is in the word of God come into our lives and change our situation and give us victory. We give you thanks in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May you have your seats in Jesus' name. This morning, I want to speak on uh, the subject that I've, I've uh, titled uh, Powered to Victory. You are powered to victory. I have come to realize in our journey of life, or I've come to realize that our journey of life is characterized by perpetual battles and warfare. There is no day or that passes without us 
finding ourselves dealing with one thing or the other. There is no single day that passes without us dealing with a battle of some kind and leaves us desperately yearning for the victory. This leaves us yearning for triumph in our area of our battle. When we are in this uh, some kind of a situation, the question that lingers in our mind is, when will this be over? When will this be over? How will it be over? Because we are struggling to understand how it will end, how it will turn out. What is the end result of the battle that you are dealing with? And, 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 and you realize that I'm talking about victory and triumphs, and you're wondering why is he talking about victory and triumphs while his message is titled, Powered to Victory. Now, it is important for us to note that you cannot talk about victory and triumphs of life without talking about battles and warfares of life. Because battles and warfares of life, they are intertwined. They are going hand in hand. You can never talk about victory unless you talk about battles. Let me tell you, brethren, victory and triumph are the outcome, are the last result of a battle. When you are in a battle, it is either you lose the battle or you win the battle. And therefore, battles of life comes with number one. Result number one is victory. And result number two is defeat. And this is one thing that as we need to understand. And, and, and a victory and defeat, as I said, they are the outcome result of a warfare in life. And, uh, and, and, and I want us to understand this. Our human, our human efforts are anchored uh, towards avoiding to get into trouble. We try as much as possible to be at peace. We try as much as possible to be at peace with our relatives, to be at peace with our friends, to be at peace with our colleagues, to be at peace with the people that we relate with on daily basis. And our efforts are anchored towards that because we love peace. But sometimes we find ourselves in situations or in battles that we never negotiated for. Sometimes you find yourself dealing with a battle that you never anticipated. One morning you get up and you are facing and you are faced with a crazy issue and you just don't know how to go about it. And the question comes in your mind, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And why me now? And that is life. That is life. You can never avoid battles of life. You can never afford, uh, you can never avoid uh, battles of life. And it is in such moments uh, that the first reaction we give is we run into panic mode. We run into panic mode. We freak out. Because you, are, you realize that what you're dealing with is greater than you. What you're dealing with is powerful than who you are. Uh, based on your natural senses or uh, uh, view of life. We think that what we are dealing with uh, is big than who we are. And we quickly become faint-hearted, we quickly become discouraged, we are quickly uh, uh, pushed into some moments of fear. But I hear the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24 verses 10, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. I want you to realize what the Bible says here. And the word fainting is synonymous with losing consciousness. 
weakness. The fainting is synonymous with being weak. When we talk about fainting, we are talking about being frail. And therefore, the Bible says if you faint, if you lose consciousness uh, uh, in time of adversity, then your strength is small. But listen to the next word he says. He uses the word uh, your strength. And in the other part, the word strength means a person's solidity, a person's a, a, a stability or tenacity. And therefore, the, uh, the, 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 the interpretation here is if you faint, if you lose consciousness in the time of adversity, then your stability, then your, uh, uh, your stability is weak then your solidity is weak there is some solidity that we have in christ there is some 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 stability that we have in god and therefore when we approach life from the perspective of solidity when we approach life from the perspective of stability in god then we've got the power to withstand the challenges of life now, I want us to realize this. Deuteronomy chapter, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1, the Bible says, uh, the Bible says, God told Israelites, when you go to war, when you go to war against your enemies, and you see horses and chariots and armies stronger than you, then don't be afraid. Why? God was telling the Israelites not to be afraid because he knew that he is with his children. God will always be with us any time we face the battles. Allow me to get into the, uh, the text that we read this morning. In Jehoshaphat, I mean, in, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verses one to five, you find here that Jehoshaphat received a terrifying message. The message was quite threatening. He got the message. Somebody came and told him, "Hey, King, there are people, there are kingdom, there are armies that are coming from Engedi, and they are coming to battle." This army is not coming to negotiate anything. They are not coming for a party. They are not coming for bilateral talks. They are actually coming to fight you. They were coming to fight. They are coming for war. And this is the message that Jehoshaphat got, uh, got from the messengers. Now, when you get such a... Um, a message the number one thing you do as we said you run into panic mode Jehoshaphat number the Bible says that he was afraid he was afraid just like you and me when we get into battles we get afraid when we get into battles that we never uh, you never planned for and actually no one wakes up planning for battle to get into a battle no one wakes up in the morning and say, okay, today I am ready to battle. Nobody. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, today I want to deal with the divorce. No one wakes up in the morning and say, today I want to deal with the sickness. Nobody wakes up and say, today I want to deal with one, uh, you know, losing of a job. You just wake up and you find a letter of termination on the table and you realize, ah, so I've got to deal with joblessness. You never plan for battles. Battles just come. Jehoshaphat had never planned to get into war with these guys. He was going about his business and the message came. Now listen to me. Jehoshaphat had not provoked anybody. Jehoshaphat had not done anything. Actually, he had just finished appointing priests and judges and Levites in Judah and Jerusalem. And so he was happy at the assignment that he had done. And he was going about doing his business for God without having, you know, intending to get into a battle. But little did Jehoshaphat know that there are people 
people that were planning to come to battle with him. He never knew that evil was around the corner. He never knew that he was just about to step into adversities of life. Now, I see a couple of principles in this passage that can empower us to victory. Because, and because of time, allow me to share too. There are many of principles that we can see from this subject. Now, principle number one, I want you to know. Is that uh, Jehoshaphat when he got this message that the Ammonites, the Munites, they are coming to fight against you. Number one thing he did, he turned to God. Jehoshaphat turned to God. Jehoshaphat did not run away from the fight. Jehoshaphat never shied away from the battle. He was scared, yes. He was nervous, yes. But he never ran away. He was scared, he was afraid, yes. But he stayed put. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 4. When the anger of the ruler raises up against you, do not leave your post. For calmness can bring you to a great rest. Calmness can help you avoid many errors. When we are faced with the battles of life, when you are faced with challenges of life, where do you run to fast? Number one thing, as I said, Jehoshaphat called for prayer and fasting. The entire Jerusalem and Judah, they came to prayer and fasting. Because Jehoshaphat knew that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Listen to me, brethren. Spiritual battles can never and will never be won by carnal and human strategies. If you are going to win your battle in life, then you've got to set up some spiritual strategies to overcome your battles. And I hear Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 17, verses 5, verses 3 to 5. Jehoshaphat knew that God was with him when he was actually ordained as the king. He the Bible says that God was with him and he has and had established his kingdom. And therefore Jehoshaphat knew, I am here because God has established me. When you know who you are, Jehoshaphat knew who he was. And so by turning to prayer, it's because he knew he was. He knew God had been with him. I hear Daniel 11.32, the Bible says, people who know, who do know their God, they will be strong and do exploits. Listen to me, church. When you know that the greater is the one that is in you than the one that is in the world. When you know that God is a present help in time of need. When you know that no weapon formed against you will prosper. Then you will not fear what mortal men will to you because you know very well my victory comes from the Lord because you know very well my power comes from the Lord you are powered to victory when you have God on your side you have power to victory when you are powered to victory when you have God on your side then you know exactly know exactly what is going how it's going to turn out when the when when the tough when the tough when the going gets tough and you are turning to God you turn to God because you know where your victory lies but the question is when it becomes tougher where do you turn to because we have the proclivity of turning to men most of the time than turning to God one time Jesus had his disciples and, 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 and a certain young boy who, had a, who was epileptic uh, fell and, and a gentleman brought the son to the disciples. 
instead of taking the son to Jesus. When you are faced with the battles of life, where do you take your circumstance? Where do you turn to? And the Bible says that after he realized that the disciples could not handle the matter, it is then that he took the son to Jesus. Why waste your time with people instead of turning to God? Because the victory that you want is locked up in God and God is in you. That is why the Bible says God is Emmanuel with us. God is with us, Emmanuel. Help me to tackle my point number two. Listen to me, brethren. Your victory is determined by who you turn to in times of adversity. Your victory is determined when you realize who is with you. Your victory is determined when you realize who has established you. The Oshephat knew that God had been with him. And it is God that had established his kingdom. When you know that God is the one that has established you. Then you are good to victory. Because that is the first position that you have been put to have your victory. Principle number two. And I said we have too many. Principle number two, the Bible says that the Jehoshaphat took his position. Take your position. Now, Jehoshaphat took his place. The Bible says he took his place even before the Israelites, Judah and Jerusalem, gathered themselves to come to the God. You have to realize that Jehoshaphat was not just a mere person. Jehoshaphat was a king. Jehoshaphat was a ruler. Jehoshaphat was actually a leader. And that comes with power. It comes with authority. Kingly position comes with authority. Kingly position comes with power. Kingly position comes with great tenacity. And therefore, the Bible says that Jehoshaphat took his position. He took his kingly position even before Judah and Israel had gathered in the temple. You can never take a position if you don't know who you are. Jehoshaphat knew that he was the king and therefore he took his kingly position. Listen to me church. The power to your victory is determined by personal awareness of who you are in God. Your victory is determined by personal awareness of who Christ has made you to be. The power to your victory is determined by personal awareness of where God has placed you. Jehoshaphat took his place because he knew who he was. Jehoshaphat took his position of authority. He took his position of power. I hear the Bible says that I have given you authority and power to tremble over every snake and scorpion. When you know that you have been given the power, the Bible actually says in John that to those that have received him, he gave them the power. And therefore you are actually empowered to victory. Because that is who you are. And when you know that you are powered to victory, you take your position without fearing. 
You take your position as a child of God. You take your position as a saint, as a chosen of God. You take your position as the anointed, a royal of God. God has chosen you. You are not just a mere thing on earth here. You are not just, you, can, you, can, you are not defined by your name. Don't allow your name to define you, Pastor Julius. Don't allow your complexion to define you. Don't allow your dressing code to define you. Don't allow what people are saying to define you. You are more than what people say you are. You are more than what people think you are. You are more than what people gossip you are. You are the chosen of God. And you have been given authority. And that authority is to be exercised. When Jehoshaphat knew that I have got the authority, I have got the power, he took his position and he said, Come on baby, I am going to deal with you because I have God with me. You cannot fear. And even when you fear, you fear with awareness that who, of who you are. Listen to me, church. When you know that you are more than a conqueror, when you know that you are a branch, an outlet of Jesus Christ, when you know that you have received the power from God, when you know that you are the appointed of God, when you know that you are the chosen of God, when you know that you are a joint heir with God himself, when you know that you are united with Christ Jesus, when you know that you and God are in one spirit, when you know that you have a direct access into God and when you know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you then you can confidently take your position and fight your battles I came to submit to somebody today Jehoshaphat this armies came to dispossess Israelite their possession that God had given him the reason that the armies came to fight is because they wanted to dispossess Israel of what God had given him why you are fighting battles today it's because the enemy doesn't want you to become what God wants you to be why you are fighting the battles today it's because the devil doesn't want you to be healed why you are fighting the battles today it's because the devil doesn't want you to become the victorious one that God wants you to be and I came to submit to you you are powered to victory I came to submit to you you are powered to victory God has deposited his power in you God has deposited his victory in you and therefore you have got all reasons to have victory Amen. God has given you so much but the devil is not happy the devil is not happy of who you are becoming. The devil is not happy of what God has blessed you with. The devil is not happy of who you are becoming. But I came to submit to you. You are powered to victory. Regardless of your challenges. You are powered to your victory. May I humbly request you to stand even as we pray this morning. I don't know where you are at in life this morning. I don't know the battles you are dealing with this morning. I don't know the challenges of your life this morning. But I want you to know. I want you to know. I want you to know. In every situation you are in, you have God that you can turn to every time. Because he is the present helper in time of need. I want you to know you have a position in Christ that can never be replaced. Lift up your hands this morning. Father we thank you. We thank you for your power. We thank you because we are victorious in you. In the midst of the challenges we are facing, we are victorious in you. Because we know you have established us. And you are with us. And because you are with us and you have established us. Then even this battle we will win. I pray 
pray for everyone lifting their hands here, Lord. May there be supernatural intervention in their battles of life. May there be supernatural interventions in their circumstances of life. May there be supernatural intervention in their sicknesses, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, minister grace to each and every one of us here. As their hands are lifted up, oh God, minister your grace and your power in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for every viewer right now, oh God, that you will minister to them the grace and strength. Bring them to a place of victory in the mighty name of Jesus. You are there in this sanctuary or you are watching in and you're watching online and you have never given your life to Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to have that fellowship with God. I want to give you that opportunity to fellowship with God. You are there and you're not born again, whether you are watching online or you are here with us say my oh god my father today i surrender myself to you today i give my life to you today i confess you as lord and savior of my life i am a sinner and today i ask for forgiveness cleanse me from all unrighteousness and make me your child in Jesus mighty name thank you father give the Lord a mighty hand clap in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah I want to take this opportunity uh, wherever you are may be seated for a minute I want to enter into another section of our worship beside you there is a card and there's an envelope for you to use for your tithe and your offerings there is a card also beside you please fill that card with some information the date of today your name the service that you are you are attending now and also your contact please give us those details it's important for us because we also want to be praying for you and if you are going to give for those ones who are in church and you want to give please you can use the envelope and those that are also here and you want to use pay bill or mpesa number you can see on the screen here also those who are watching us the numbers are scrolling on the screen please you can use the pay bill you can use the mpesa number feel free to do that it's on the screen and if you're writing a um, check, please use the P.O. box that's also on the screen so that we can be able to have it on our end. I want to remind us of um, our weekly midweek services. They're still on from every Tuesday to Friday from 11.45, I mean 12.45, 12.45, Muchana. Please make an effort if you're free, just come around. If you're, if you're away, you can tune in as well. Please do that from every Tuesday to Friday. Now allow me to recognize those that are watching us live. We have many of them. But allow me to recognize Bishop, our Bishop, our Father, uh, Francis Kamau, Frederick Karanja, Caroline Brankham. Winning Gachem, Grace Mukundi, Samuel Ikiara, David Rob, Jane, John Kinyua, Daniel Mwangi, Francis Kithiam, Brenda Akob, Victor Njuguna, and many others. Victor Njuguna actually is watching us from Seattle, Washington, and Regina Kirui is watching us from Dallas. Thank you so much. We have charity. Mururi from Germany. Thank you everyone that is watching us online. We have many of us doing that. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. May I humbly request you to stand as you prepare your um, gifting. Um, we have it, the places to, to drop. And let us just be upstanding as we find all of the service. Father, we thank you for the offering of your people. Bless
bless each and every one of them. Let them be supernatural open doors over their lives. And because of them honoring you, Father, we pray you will honor them and fight their battles. We give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of our Father forever and ever. Amen. Shalom and God bless you.